Hi, Eric Archer here from Texas Instruments, and today we have Ty Cook uh, for our Smart Space video lesson that's going to be covering fossils and, and how to make your own fossils. So, Ty, tell us how to make your own fossil. I'm excited about this one. Yes, this is one of the most fun days in my classroom, but I'm telling you right now, it's also one of the messiest days in my classroom, <laughs> is imagine 30 students, five class periods with this plaster of Paris. It's like a chalky dust mixture oh, yeah. of fossils, but it's so much fun because as we talk about the geologic time scale, we're talking about the history of life as evidenced by fossils. And we know that fossils are animals that have been preserved in rock over time. And it tells us about the history of life on earth. And then we take those fossils and we place them in a timeline, which we call the geologic time scale. So that's showing us the history of what organisms have existed on Earth throughout time. And so as we cover this in class, one day I had the idea that I wanted to do something hands-on with my students so we could actually see, you know, a sped up version. We take millions, hundreds of millions of years and we're going to shrink it down into this little video for you today. So this is a really fun thing that if you're watching this at home, you should definitely try this. There's lots of different things you could use to make it, but I'm gonna show you what we do in class. Because at school, obviously, we have tons of milk cartons. I go, if you're a teacher out there, we collect these two to three days before this fossil making activity. Students take a trash bag and we go get all of the empty cartons. Make sure you pour out the milk because then we rinse them out, clean them, and we let them dry. And I take a pair of scissors and all you have to do to prep for this is cut this top part off. So the, like the mouth of the carton. And what we're gonna be left with is just this little square that's gonna become the container for our fossil. So we're reusing materials, which is great. So repurposing the milk carton, it's cheap. And by cheap, I mean free, which I love as a teacher. And now we're ready. So the supplies are very minimal for this. Plaster of Paris is this chalky like mixture. And I always tell my students, I think of drywall, like the sheetrock in our homes, that when we look at this plaster, it's very chalky, it's very dusty. But when we mix it together, it's gonna form a mixture that's a lot thicker and a lot more durable. And um, that's what we're gonna use today to make our fossils. So. Plaster of Paris, y'all can get it on Amazon. That's where I get it for my students. You can get it at low, you can get it lots and lots of stores out there, but it's very cheap and easily accessible. Now, I'm gonna give you a little spoiler alert because this right here is the end product. And I'm gonna see if we can see that really well. We've got our imprint of a seashell, and this is what we're gonna be creating today and ours, and that's one that one of my students has made. So we want to start with our plaster of Paris. And now the good thing about this, if you mess up, it's so easy to fix. I'm gonna show you some little quick fixes that you can do if you mess up along the way. Because let me tell you, when you have 30 students doing this all at once, I've seen every wrong way to do it. So I just wanna show y'all, I'm spooning in the mixture and it's a little hard to see, but here's the goal. I usually fill mine about halfway full. If you wanna fill it all the way, go for it. If you wanna make it smaller, if you're in a classroom and you're a teacher trying to conserve materials, you probably wanna go like a third of the way because it can go through quite a lot. You would be shocked how much you might use um, throughout the day with like 150 students. So. For me, I've got it filled halfway, and now all we need to do is add water. So here is where we want to be really careful. You know, if you add too much water, we're going to end up with soup, and that soup is not really going to harden. It's not going to make a good fossil. We're not going to have a good imprint. If you don't put enough water, you're going to end up with concrete, and the concrete is not really a good place for you to imprint these shells. So we want to make sure it's like, um, you know, the three little bears. Well, we want it to be just right. So we're going to add slowly and we're going to go just a little bit of water at a time because here's the deal. You can always add more, but it's hard to take it away. So 
as you're pouring, I'm gonna put my bowl here because I'm afraid that this could get a little messy. When we're in my classroom, sometimes we have like a lab tray, we might have a bowl, we've got paper towels because y'all know that it's gonna get real messy. Now, the cool thing is, and I don't know if we can see it on here, I'm gonna put it up. You've got this little reaction. Can y'all see the smoke type coming out of there? A little bit. A little bit. So yeah. students often notice that reaction when the water starts to mix. And what you wanna do is you wanna get something to stir with and you wanna make sure that we're kind of mixing this all together. And at first it's really hard because I mean, it's really thick. So you just kind of be really gentle in my class, another thing I use instead of a spoon is we have like tongue depressors. Those can be like really good stirring sticks. And the thing is, right now it's really chunky, it's really gloppy. That's not what we want. We want the consistency of like a really well blended milkshake. So that's what I always use. Or another one is if you know what pancake batter is supposed to look like, that's kind of what we're going to pour. It's thick but thin enough that it's kind of still. So at this point, I wanna show y'all, mine is way too thick. I can see chalk in there and that means we need more water. So luckily, I'll just add some more in. I'm gonna do a little bit at a time because we wanna make sure that we don't add too much because if we add too much all at once, we're gonna end up with that soup. And that was the thing that I said, it's not gonna really help us. So. I'm just gonna keep mixing it. And that's one of the things I always tell my students is we wanna make sure as we're mixing it to kind of do it quickly. We don't wanna let it set. We don't wanna to take too long because sometimes that can lead to it hardening without us really getting that imprint in there that's gonna create our fossil. All right, so I've added just a tiny bit too much water and I'm glad I did this because I wanna show you all how easy it is to fix this. My mixture, is kind of runny, we're almost there, kind of looks like a frosty or something, like a runny milkshake. And so I wanna add just like a little spoonful and see if that gets it to the exact right consistency. So like I said, if you add too much water, add more plaster. Don't add enough water, just put in a little more. And you can kind of do it that way, little by little, but just do little increments so that whatever you do, you can always kind of fix it. Ian, you just got to be kind of like that too. Uh, if you start off um, with a lower amount of uh, plaster of Paris, like you were saying, a third of the container, in case you do run into that issue, you can, um, you can fix it. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, and that's another good point. Like, yeah, starting at a third and then adding to it if you need to. Because like you said, if we start with a half and then we keep adding, well, now we've used a lot of plaster. So that is our mixture. You can see that it will budge, it will drop, but it's, it's holding together pretty well. So it's not too runny and that's the consistency we're looking for. Now just know your fossil is going to turn out fine if it's a little more runny, if it's a little thicker, it's okay, but that's the general thing that we're looking for. Now I want to smooth it out because we want a smooth surface, like the surface of the ground where a fossil might form. And once we've smoothed it out, you've got to pick what are you going to make your imprint with. Seashells are a really great thing that you can use to make an imprint. This one has a lot of ridges and makes a really cool imprint. These I thought were really cool, but I want to warn you, you got to think about what can you pull out of the mixture because these uh -huh. like get stuck and that makes it really hard for you to see what imprints left behind because you're gonna have to remove it. So what I'm gonna use, and one of the things I found to be the easiest to pull out are these. These are just little like seashells. Is that a clamshell? These have really deep ridges and those deep ridges are perfect for an imprint, but what they're also perfect for is they are easy to pull out because I can put my finger right there and I can kind of pluck it out. So that's a really great one to use with your students. And I usually let them come over and pick one. And then we are going to make our imprint. So at this point, what I always tell my students, and I'm gonna show this to y'all, 
is we want an imprint, but we don't want to submerge the shell. Because if you submerge that shell, well, this mixture is hardening. And as it hardens, it will become part of that mixture. So we want it to be raised on the surface. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I forgot vegetable oil. So don't do what I did. Because the first time I did this, it will pop out, but you have to be a lot more careful. If you don't have vegetable oil or some kind of spray oil that's gonna help you pull it out, you will be fine. You'll just wanna make sure you don't let it set for too long so that you can remove it. Uh, one of the tools I use in my classroom to pull these out is like a pair of needle nose pliers. That really helps me kind of get a good hold on it. And, um, but if you do have some cooking spray, you're doing this in your classroom, oil the shell up and that oil will help create a barrier that's gonna make it really easy for you to get out of there. Now, what do I do with my students? We've got 150 of these, so a really smart idea. Every student should write their name on the carton um, so that they know whose it is, because when they come back tomorrow, they're all going to look the same to them. And that always happens. Right. <laughs> you got to write your name on the cartons. And then here's the other big tip. For a teacher that wants to do this in their classroom, you want to make sure that they are opening this over a trash can. Because tomorrow, this is going to be very chalky, and there's going to be little remnants that are going to fall off everywhere, and we're going to clean it up until it's this nice, beautiful square, and we have our fossil that's left behind. Um, and it's a little bit of a mess. So make sure that you are doing that part of getting it ready. Um, and you're going to have these awesome fossils. Now, another thing that I've done before at home, you can take this plaster of Paris mixture. You can make big fossils. You could put it in like a disposable pan. You could put it in a Tupperware. You could use all sorts of containers. I just use this container because it's cheap and free at my school and we're recycling and reusing it, but you can use whatever you want. Now, the only thing I really wanna point out is how long do I actually wait to take this out? Um, I typically would say between five and 15 minutes and it depends on how soupy your mixture was. I've had students where it's so soupy that we had to wait hours, and I've had some where it's so thick that we needed to take it out right away. But as you watch it, what you'll start to see is you'll see the moisture kind of leaving the um, surface, and when it looks less wet and it starts to look more dry, you know that you wanna go ahead and remove it and make sure you get it out because it's better to remove it too soon than to wait and for it to really be stuck. But that vegetable oil, if you use it correctly, unlike me, is gonna really help you as well. So I hope that this is something fun that y'all can do at home. You can do it with your parents, your siblings, make all sorts of fun fossils. You can use leaves from your yard and do a fun imprint. You could even make a trace fossil with your footprints, which would be a lot of fun mm -hmm. if you had a bigger surface. But this is just a fun way to kind of look at how fossils are formed. And we're taking millions of years and shrinking it all down to just this couple of minutes. That is so awesome. Yeah, thank you, Ty, for sharing that with us. And I, I, that just looks like a fun activity. I, I actually want to try that at home myself. But yeah. I, what I love most about this is that you're taking, um, you're, you're kind of putting the students in, in sort of the, the position of forming a fossil to the point of them to realize that these fossils in, in, in the real world uh, that nature forms, those are, those are uh, that's evidence of, of the geologic time scale. And so they can look at those fossils um, and, and understand, like you said, kind of, you can place them chrono chronologically uh, and, and sort of understand, you know, the sort of the geological time scale of planet Earth and life on planet Earth. So yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing this with us. Thanks so much for having us and make sure you have lots of paper towels and you are ready to clean up because although <laughs> it's fun, it's a little bit messy and that's the best part.